So Andy, you and I know that one of the centerpieces of bipolar treatment is um, the importance of regular involvement in an ongoing support group. Um, but we also know that's not the whole piece. Uh, a student with bipolar disorder or a young adult, late adolescent with bipolar disorder will likely need medication and they will also likely need a psychotherapist who they're able to meet with and talk with from time to time. Now I'm not saying that all students or all individuals with bipolar disorder need ongoing psychotherapy, but certainly at the beginning of, of the diagnosis and intermittently over the course of the, the, their life, they may need to see someone for psychotherapy in addition to psychiatry. When you think of the qualities that um, the individual should look for in the psychotherapist and the psychiatrist that they go to see, what are those qualities? What are the kinds of questions that the uh, adolescent and young adult should be asking the person they seek for, the person they see to assist them with their disorder? Well, I, I think a couple things. I think they want to start thinking about that they're in charge of their treatment, that this is an individual that they're hiring, that this person is working for them, that in a sense they are interviewing an employee. And, and to get a little bit into that mindset, because I think the vulnerability, particularly for an adolescent, a young adult who's seeing a professional, they're easily going to be a little bit shy, maybe a little bit intimidated, a little bit hesitant to ask um, a lot of questions. And, and I want them to start thinking about uh, asking all the questions that they have, um, thinking, that, thinking that there's no such thing as a trivial question or foolish concern. And they want to ask that individual, uh, the psychotherapist or the psychiatrist, and a lot of psychiatrists do therapy. So they may be talking to somebody about doing the therapy and medications, or they may be talking to somebody to do the therapy, another person to do the medications. One way or the other, the questions are very, very much the same. Such as? What, okay, what, what so are some you examples? Would, you would want to say, ask Dr. Smith, uh, Dr. Smith, um, do you see a lot of bipolar patients? Do you have experience working with bipolar patients? What in general do you do with those patients? How do you treat them? What's your uh, treatment protocol? Would it, be, would it be fair to ask Dr. Smith how many bipolar uh, individuals he or she, he or Absolutely. she has treated? No, I, I think it's a, I think it's an, you, you would certainly ask a surgeon who's recommending a particular surgery how many of them he's done and what his outcome has been. So it's, it's reasonable to say, how many bipolar patients have you seen over the time of your career so far? And now, th this, I have another question here, and this, this may be awkward for the 20-year-old or 17-year-old, mm -hmm. but is it fair to say to a psychiatrist or a psychotherapist, do you feel you're good with bipolar disorder? Is it, is it something that you feel expert with? It's not only fair to ask, it's crucial to ask. It's absolutely a question they should ask. Do you feel comfortable working with bipolar patients? Do you like working with bipolar patients? Do you feel you're good at it? Is this, is this an area of sort of uh, subspecialty of yours? That it's, it's something that you really like to do? I mean, you and I know that there's several uh, psychiatrists and psychologists here in the community that work with a lot of bipolar patients. They're good with them. They, they like doing it. It's absolutely a legitimate question to ask. And, and particularly of psychiatrists, not only do they like to do it and do they do a lot of it, but do they keep up on the literature? Do they go to review courses? Do they uh, attend lectures on, on the latest in bipolar medication or bipolar management? Now, I imagine that a late age adolescent or a young adult would feel intimidated in asking those kind of questions, or they would not intimidate. They'd feel apprehensive about asking those questions. Absolutely, and they're gonna feel apprehensive. They're going to feel worried about that. And so it may be important if they've got a good relationship with a parent to have the parent uh, with them on some of those first interviews. Uh, or potentially a friend. A friend, even a friend. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it's an underutilized, it's, it's an underutilized mechanism is to take a friend with you, uh, someone you trust, uh, to help you interview the person that's going to be doing the, the treatment. It's, a, it's, it's far too uh, underutilized. And, and what's the benefit of that? When you think of what you're going to get from having a friend or a family member along, what are your thoughts? Well, you, you, have, you have somebody there who is not going to be as nervous as you are. 
and who's probably going to feel more comfortable asking questions, who will ask the questions that you forget to ask, who will also be able to maybe follow up some of the questions that you ask, but you're sort of nervous and afraid to make a follow-up question, maybe they'll make an important follow-up question. And I think they will give you a little bit of extra confidence in asking your questions. It, it, it can become sort of, not quite, but it's sort of like two against one as opposed to uh, a frightened patient uh, being intimidated out of asking some important questions to a professional. Uh, and even if the professional is open and warm and accepting of it, the first meeting or the first meetings, the patient is going to be shy. Well, and has th there's, a, there's a significant there's power a significant, differential. Absolutely, yeah. significant. And so anything we can do to encourage people to try to put that aside, to realize that they want to be in charge of their treatment, they want to be interviewing this person a as an employee. I mean, I, and, and how many 18-year-olds have had employees? Right. But if they can get in that mindset a little bit, and, and anything we can do to encourage them to feel confident in asking tough questions. And if the therapist or psychiatrist responds badly to the question, that's an, an, that's an answer. I mean, that's a signal that this is a person you probably don't want to work with. Because anybody in that position of the therapist or psychiatrist should be open to any and all questions, particularly early on.